Let me show you how to install and use Gemini Code Assist inside of IntelliJ. Now we first need to install the Code Assist plugin. To do that, we go in the upper right and click on the three dots. Then we select plugins. From here, a new window pops up and we need to click over to the marketplace. Now we can go to the search bar and search for the Gemini Code Assist plugin. The first one that pops up is the one that we want. We can tell because it is published by Google. So now we can just click on the install button to install the plugin. Once it's installed, we actually need to restart the IDE for it to take effect. So we'll click on the restart IDE button. Then we just confirm and we click on restart. Once the IDE has restarted, you'll get a new window for the Gemini Code Assist over here on this tool panel. You can also switch to this pane by clicking on the Gemini icon over here on the right sidebar. The next thing that we need to do is we need to sign into our Google account so we can associate it with this plugin. It even tells you that right here. And so we'll click on the sign in with Google button. Now this will open up a new window and from here, just sign in to your Google account that you want to use for the plugin. Once you're finished with that, you'll come to this page and it'll tell you it's now authorized for use in IntelliJ. Now we can go back to IntelliJ, but we're met with another thing that we have to do. We need to select a Google Cloud project. This is so that Google can tie all of the code or all of the suggestions to a single project for billing purposes. So the next thing we'll do is we'll click the button to select a Google Cloud project. Now it'll pop up this window and you can see all of the projects associated with my account. So you can choose an existing project that you already have, but if you don't have a project, it'll say nothing to show. And we need to create one. Unfortunately, we can't do that from this menu. We'll actually have to go back to our browser to create the project. You'll need to traverse to this URL up here, which is console.cloud.google.com forward slash project create. And don't worry, the link is in the description, so you can just go there to click on it. Now, all we need to do is give the project a name and select an organization, or just keep it at no organization if you don't want to associate it with another org. So once I've named it, I'm going to hit create. Now that we've created that project, we need to refresh this page to see it on this list. For some reason, this refresh button in the bottom left doesn't work. The only way to get it to refresh is by hitting cancel and then hitting the select a Google Cloud project again. Now I can see that project that I created and I'll select it and then hit OK. Now we can start using Google Code Assist inside of our IDE. Like I said before, we have this icon in the right and this will open up the chat menu where you can chat about your code or ask it questions. We also have the same icon at the bottom where we can select it and do a number of different things, including configuring Gemini. For now, I'm going to close out of the chat so I can show you how to use it inside of the editor. So here's where we run into our first issue. If you go into the editor and start typing and expecting some code suggestions, you might get this red banner up at the top. And what this is saying is the project that we selected actually doesn't have the API enabled for us to start getting those code suggestions. And there's two ways that you can remedy that. You can either go to the browser, go back to your project, find the API and enable it for that project or you can just click this button to enable the API. Obviously, this is the easiest way, so I'll click on Enable API. Now from here, it doesn't automatically take the banner away, but if I hit Enter, I should start getting code suggestions from Gemini Code Assist. And since this banner is ugly, I'm going to click the X button to close it out. So now you can see I start getting suggestions and it's also telling me how to use it. I press Tab to accept the suggestion, I press Escape to skip a suggestion, and I press Alt-G for another suggestion. So I'm gonna start typing Output Handler, and you you can see it automatically is displaying the rest of the code suggestion that I might want. And this is exactly what I want, so I'm going to hit tab to complete it. Another way we can interact with the Gemini Code Assist is by opening up the menu and letting it generate certain pieces of code. To open up the quick pick menu, we hold control and we hit backslash on the keyboard. Now, since we want to generate code, we're going to hit forward slash and start typing generate. So since the project that I'm in is a game, I want to generate a function that displays the shop menu. So I'll type that out here and then I'll hit enter and see what it gives me. So notice now we're in a new menu. This menu is the diff menu. This is showing the difference between what I had before and what the generate suggests that I add to the code. So since this is a diff, I'm just gonna look over it a little bit, see that I, I like it. I think the changes are good and I'm going to go up here, click on the button, accept changes. Now all of those changes are added directly to the file that I was working on. Now you notice the code that it gave me actually has a bunch of errors in it. And that's because none of this was implemented inside of the shop class that I have created. So this is important to note that the shop class wasn't used inside of the generate prompt that the AI was given. And as of the time of this recording, local code base awareness is not available inside of the Gemini Code Assist plugin for IntelliJ or other JetBrains products. So unfortunately, we can't prompt it with multiple classes or use it inside of the chat with multiple classes like we can in VS Code. But sometimes in our code, when we do have errors, we can click on this light bulb button 
button. And down under here, we actually have an option to fix with Gemini. If we click this, it will open up a diff just like the other one with generate and give us an option to accept changes that might help. So obviously here, this fix is correct and I'll hit accept changes. So it fixed it here, but I wanna show something that's really weird. This is a bit finicky, but sometimes this light bulb button just doesn't show that option to fix with Gemini. And it's all dependent on where the cursor is. So here I'm on this PRIN part. And if I hit this button, it gives me no option to fix with Gemini. And if I put the cursor at the end and then hit the light bulb button, it also doesn't give me the option to fix with Gemini. It's only when I click on the cursor right before the TLN portion that when I click on the light bulb, it actually gives me the fix with Gemini. If you don't wanna deal with the light bulb at all, we can select the entirety of what the problem might be and then hit control and then backslash on our keyboard and then type forward slash fix and hit enter. From here, you notice it opens up the diff window and it gives us the same prompt and tells us, hey, this is how to fix it. So now I'll, I'll accept these changes. So now that it's fixed again, I'm going to screw it up one more time and I'm going to select this again. And you'll notice a new menu comes up where we can click on the Gemini icon. From here, we have a few different options. We can open in editor prompt. We could generate code. We can generate unit tests. We could explain this. I'm going to click on open in editor prompt because it just opens up the same menu that we've seen before. And then I can type fix again, go through that whole thing. I won't show it again. What's nice is we also have an option to explain pieces of code. So I have this function here and I want to know what it's doing. I'm going to highlight the whole thing. And this time I'm going to use this icon and click on it and then go to explain this to tell me what is happening here. Notice how it opens up the chat window. And now I'm in this chat with Gemini. You can see what it's doing is just saying explain this. And then it has all of the code that I highlighted and I get a response back. It says this Java code snippet represents a method called change location that allows a user to change their location within a game or simulation. And then it breaks it down step by step and tells me what each line is doing. We also have the ability to treat this window like a chat. So I could say summarize game.java and it will tell me exactly what is happening inside of the whole class game.java. So I typed in summarize game.java and after it's done thinking, it tells me game.java is the main class orchestrating the cyberpunk RPG, which is what I was creating. It manages the game loop, player creation, world initialization, and handles player choices. So you can see Gemini Code Assist or any AI can be really powerful in your development. And I would highly suggest at least trying it out. But this is how you install and use Gemini Code Assist inside of IntelliJ.